The Institute for Supply Management's annual conference is fast approaching. On May 6th, thousands of industry professionals will gather in Nashville, Tennessee to network, exchange best practices, and discuss emerging trends. Here at Source One, we're getting ready for the year's premier supply management conference with our new series, ISM 2018 Session Insights. Tune in every week to hear our experts discuss the topics that promise to dominate the conversation at this year's conference. So, Caitlin, before we get started, would you mind introducing yourself and describing your role at Source One? Sure, absolutely. So, here at Source One, I actually specialize in the HR and marketing strategic sourcing verticals. And typically, what I'm doing is working with our clients trying to implement customized procurement solutions to optimize their goals within human resources and marketing. The unique part about my role is that I'm also assisting within our internal marketing efforts. So the communications and marketing aspect where that comes with investing in brands. So my passion is really investing in companies' greatest assets, right? Their people and their brands. Awesome. And could you tell me a little bit about the presentation you'll be giving at this year's ISM conference? Absolutely. So this year, myself and two of my co-presenters are going to be presenting on the topic of procurement transformations. But bringing a little bit of a different angle. So we're really going to be focusing on the recruiting, branding, and the leading aspect, leading through the metrics and just the sustainability of procurement transformation. So I think that it's a hot topic. Everyone's been talking about it. And if you're not doing it, you're kind of a a laggard at this point is the the typical notion. But what we're trying to do is really implement some best practices in how to go about it. And part of that starts with just initially elevating procurement status through the development of a brand identity. Interesting. And what, in your opinion, makes a brand valuable or impactful? Well, at a very fundamental level, I believe that all brands are valuable because they have this inherent ability to create an emotional connection with people. And really strong brands, they can influence a lot of factors in businesses. So, you know, driving shareholder value or creating a a sense of power or wealth that transcends uh, geographical or, or political boundaries. But when I say valuable, I mean it in the sense that uh, a consumer can make a binary decision based on a brand. So it's either they go with you or they go with someone else based on the impactfulness of the brand. So although there's value in all brands because of their ability to influence, that doesn't necessarily mean that all brands are equally as impactful. And that to me is the real differentiator. When you're thinking of a brand, especially the ones you see every day, right? It, it really sets a brand apart when it's impactful. So if you think about the Nikes and the Apples of the world who are really just set apart from their competition, it's because they've associated a level of impactfulness with that brand. And I consider that idea of a brand being impactful to consist of a, a couple of different things. I think one is this idea of staying consistent. Uh, And that goes for the consistency within the quality of the the product or the service, but also just consistency in the overall message. I think in addition to consistency, it's this idea of building a strong leadership reputation. So we're all saturated with competition and, and competitors, and it's really just maintaining and also just delivering on that reputation of being the best, which solidifies a brand. Really, I I would say the other one in terms of creating an impactful brand would be this idea of sustainable relevancy. So it requires a level of of passionate perseverance from the business in creating a positive association with whatever their unique service or product is. And how would you describe procurement's brand within most organizations? Do you think it's successful, like those highly impactful brands that you describe typically? That's a good question. I think that a number of organizations have done a great job getting procurement on the map and starting that sort of internal dialogue about the strategic impact that procurement is capable of delivering across the enterprise. That being said, I think there's still some room for growth and some work to be done in breaking down some of those traditional silos and and really selling procurement's brand. And Bennett, that idea of procurement as a salesperson has to be accepted, in my opinion, because truly we are in the business of sales in some sense of the word. So we do great work and we contribute a lot of value across the organization, but we don't always gain the momentum we need because We don't create awareness, we don't promote our achievements, and oftentimes we don't get everyone on board when we need to. 
Why do you think that is? Why might procurement's branding efforts sometimes come up short? Well, this can be debated, but in my opinion, I think in procurement, we can often be so focused on the analytical components, right? The metrics we track to demonstrate success within the function. Cost savings is a perfect example everyone's familiar with. And we forget sometimes that these metrics that are inherent to procurement and what we attribute to success, those don't always resonate with our business counterparts or our stakeholders, right? So a branding effort needs to start by building a brand strategy within the context of the procurement function but eventually it needs to factor in how to sell those benefits of procurement across the organization as well. So kind of on the same subject, procurement strategic benefits are obvious to you or me, but how should the department go about selling itself to a skeptic? That's a good question, Bennett, because I, I do think that there are a lot of skeptics since so many times procurement is sort of seen as the police of the organization. <laughs> but truly, I think it's a fairly simple process I think that procurement needs to lead by understanding the other business needs rather than pushing our agenda. So it's this idea of the push versus pull. I think that it's recognizing that in developing our technical skills, we also need to make those soft skills a priority, like being highly emotional, intelligent, and aligning with others and, and speaking their language as opposed to using procurement jargon. And what are the must-haves for a successful branding effort on procurement's part? So this is going to maybe be cheesy, and hopefully people understand this reference, but I feel like Stephen Covey's seven habits are really applicable in this scenario, Bennett. So in the sense that there needs to be an inside-out approach, I think that the change and this, this brand or rebranding initiative starts from within procurement and then permeates the rest of both the internal organization followed by external sources. So that can be consumers, it can be suppliers, what have you. So kind of in exploring this topic or this notion, going down this path of Stephen Covey's seven habits, in his book, he references these habits as, uh, you know, one, being proactive, two, begin with the end in mind, three, put first things first, four, think win-win, five, seek first to understand, then to be understood, six is synergize, and I believe the seventh is really just this idea at continuous improvement, right? Constantly being able to improve and, and become better. You're probably thinking, this is a non-sequitur, Caitlin, what are you talking about? But it's actually really relevant in the sense that procurement needs to follow these habits or, or this process, whatever you want to call it, to have a successful branding or rebranding initiative. Because if you take a step back and you look at them in their essence, you know, being proactive really just means being intentional. It means establishing the right team to drive that brand strategy. Beginning with the end in mind, I think it's just focusing on whatever the end goal is. You know, if, if that's gaining a seat at the table, focus on that and figure out what are the incremental steps you have to take to get there. Putting first things first. I think prioritization is a must, especially when it comes to branding, because it can be such an ethereal concept of creating a strong brand. So I think Beginning within the function of procurement as the first step is, is really important to get the right people on board. You gain alignment within the function, and that way uh, you're able to take that and have a united front when you're approaching the rest of the organization. And then the rest of them follow suit. And you've spoken a little bit about this, but I was hoping to get a little bit more information. How does procurement rebrand itself within the department itself? You've spoken a little bit about how it's got to start within the function. I'm wondering if you could describe what that looks like. Sure. So I think this is a case-by-case -case basis. It's, it's first just taking a step back and seeing where you are. Do you, do you have at least the foundation of a brand established? Do you feel like you have that relevancy? Do you have a strong reputation? Uh, regardless of a reputation, is the perception of procurement in the rest of the organization important? When you're starting with the department itself, I think that in part it's it's setting realistic expectations, right? It's addressing resistance early on and, and head on. So trying to communicate early and often that this shouldn't be perceived as this daunting task, but more of a collaborative process. And that means that a procurement leader needs to really get people excited and on board early on and then communicate each step within that process of rolling out a brand. Uh, again, I, I think it starts with having the right people to drive that 
brand or rebranding initiative. I think it's establishing goals that are inherent to procurement and then being able to understand how they permeate the overall corporate strategy. And from there, I think it's creating really this value proposition for procurement that you can leverage and then being able to capitalize on successes and you share those stories, right? Have those success stories be shared with stakeholders within the rest of the organization. So I think it's teaching that process to procurement itself and then having them continue to roll that out across the organization. Thanks, Caitlin. I really look forward to learning more about refining procurement's brand at ISM 2018. Thanks so much, Bennett. Appreciate it. And I'll see you there. You've been listening to ISM 2018 Session Insights. Tune in next week to hear more from the procurement leaders at Source One. See you in Nashville.